Hey guys, it's Bradley. Welcome back to my channel. Portland gentlemen, it's great to have you here today. Today's video is all about the troll. That's Brew Tools bespoke brewing cart. Honestly, everyone, I have been waiting for this, the troll, the cart. It feels like probably three and a half, almost four years. It was first rumored years ago. Brew Tools has been very busy building lots of cool and innovative and unique products. They finally have released the troll. I am lucky enough to have one here in the brewery to test out and let you guys know what I think. If it's your first time here, please consider liking and subscribing. Definitely comment. It actually helps the video do a lot better. And if you want to share it, I'd be eternally grateful. All right, so I'm going to cover a few things in this video. Number one is the troll itself, what I think of it, what it's going to be useful for and who it's going to be useful for. I'm going to show you how to build it because there are some little snafus, stuff that could take you extra time. You want to make sure you build this as quickly as possible and as safely as possible, to be honest. So I'm gonna help you work through that. Towards the end, there are also some little kind of issues I have, you know me, it's not perfect, but it's really, really close. And the other thing I wanna to touch on is accessibility. This does bring accessibility to the home brewing space. Honestly, this thing can lift up pretty much anything you're gonna put under it within reason at a home brew scale, especially, although this is a commercial grade product, in my opinion, it is heavy duty. I mean. I, I sat on this thing and it did not even squeak and big boy, right? So it's really, really robust, but I'm getting touching on accessibility here is if you have a medical condition or some sort of a condition or you're just old or you're fat and lazy like me, it can do all the heavy lifting for you. Granted, you still have to be able to spin it and move it and I guess you could clamp some sort of an arm to it so you could maybe manipulate it easier but it's really pretty easy to spin. We will get into that in the end. I have some things I wanna to touch on to make it easier to spin. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump behind the uh, narration screen and I'm gonna show you how to build the troll. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. All right, so the two main halves of the frame are identical. I have chosen this one for the bottom half. It honestly doesn't matter, but I thought this will make a better bottom of the frame. So here it is and it's beautiful pure blast finish. And here are the legs. All four legs are identical. Again, pick whatever legs you want facing the front. The next step is to look at these super sweet stainless steel wheels. There are two wheels that lock for the front and two wheels that don't that you should put in the back. Next, you wanna take your wheel and simply put it through the hole. And then you're gonna to wanna to grab a leg. Now when you grab it, make sure that the leg is clean. There, there's a little bit of that glass blasting media left in mind. Shake yours out first. Make sure you get them nice and clean. The glass blast media could actually affect the threads and how stuff goes together. So make sure it's clean, take your time, and then go ahead and start threading on the leg. Take your time when starting the leg to make sure that you do not cross thread or strip it. It is unlikely, but definitely possible. So get that as hand tight as you can. And then you're gonna wanna grab a wrench, a cheaper, slimmer wrench, Works well unless you have a purpose-built skinny wrench, I recommend that. And then take great care to make sure everything is lined up and nice and flush, which it should line up beautifully like mine. And then at the very last, you just give it one last little check. Again, here's a close-up of putting a wrench on there to tighten up this wheel. And oh yeah, the tolerance here, very impressive. Here's an up-close look at one of the welds and the pure blasting on my base piece. Next, you wanna take the piece you've chosen for the top of the main structure and set that on top of the four uprights. Be careful it doesn't fall off. Take your time and line it up. Then take one of the supplied Allen bolts and Allen key and get these nice and tight. Taking great care again to make sure everything is lined up smooth and flush. You may have to leave some loose and tighten everything later. Here's a look at it fully assembled. You can see mine is all set together quite nicely. I made sure everything was flush. I did leave some stuff loose and then tighten it up just to make sure it fits together perfectly. Great. You should definitely make sure you get the blast media out of the threads. It'll just make it go together much easier. And just look at how robust this is. Really heavy wall stainless steel. There is nothing like this on the market that I've ever seen. It's super heavy duty and you know it's not going to rust. That's for sure. As I've had a few other tables lately in the brewery I've been looking at, the quality of the Troll brewing cart is just, honestly, it is second to none within the industry. It's truly commercial grade. 
directly on top of the top piece, there are these black rubber strips. They are all the same length, so no need to worry or fret. You just want to install them in the center as best you can, pull back the backing, and then lay them down. It's really simple, but it's easy to screw up. You definitely want to make sure that you have cleaned all surfaces you're sticking this to, and it's just, it's something when you have these on here, they're really dense, and it's really cool just to kind of behold what's coming together before our eyes. Once you get these on there, it should look something like this. And what these do is the top itself has no screws that go through it. There's no penetrations, at least for bolting. So this kind of helps all seat together. This is the optional counterflow chiller mount as well as the mounting hardware that comes with it. I'm gonna show you how to install that right now. I do recommend, pro tip, install the bracket to the chiller itself. It makes it a lot, lot easier to install this way and make sure that is tight. I recommend leaving it hand tight because you may want to adjust this tiller later. At this point, just have those bolts already going through the frame, then slide the chiller up onto them. It makes it so much easier. You're not fighting its weight because again, it's brutal. So you know it's high quality, which means it's, it's heavy. So get it on there. Again, you don't have to mount it in the middle as I have, but that's where I have it for now. You may want to vary this location and its spacing within the bracket just based on your plumbing setup and the size of your system, whatever you're using this Troll Brewing Cart for. Again, run those down to pretty tight, but not super tight. Avoid my example here. Trust me, I've already had to reposition it. Not a big deal, but save yourself a little headache and learn from me. Now that the chiller is installed, we can behold it under slung, under the brewing system, out of the way. Here's a look at the bolt kit for the crane installation. This is the lower crane bracket. It secures with two bolts. It also has that foot there that bolts to the bottom to help stabilize the crane when lifting from the side. This guy goes in pretty easy. Just use an Allen wrench and a wrench and tighten it up. There's also this plastic collar. It's a snug fit, but just push it in and that helps that crane's main pipe stay put. These little silicone plugs go in every hole throughout the frame you're not gonna use. They're optional to install, but I quite find them satisfying. They do take a great amount of force to put in, but just bear with it, push them in, and it's pretty cool. Just another high-end Brutools touch. Now it's time for the beautiful top piece of stainless. This thing is quite heavy and quite robust, made of a heavy gauge, and it just simply sits on top of the main frame. As the main frame is a square, you can put it any way you want. Just keep in mind where you want your crane if you are in fact using a crane in your setup, but it'll slide around the top and its weight will pull it out of place. You may have to push on a little bit, but it should seat just fine. Here's this top pier blast surface. Plenty of room for any brutal system. Now this collar here, actually mine was an extremely tight fit and I had to push really hard and get it in really straight to get it to seat, but obviously I got it seated just fine. And there it is ready to accept the shaft. It's time to insert the main shaft of the crane itself, the hoist, just slide it in and it will seat in that bottom one and everything goes in nicely. At this point, you're nearly almost all the way finished assembling. There's a separate little kind of top collar piece that we'll throw on here in a minute. This piece holds everything together as the internal second shaft of the crane is a smaller diameter and fits inside of it. It helps it all slip together nicely. At that point, just slide on the second crane tube. And this one, once you get it down to where you want it, it is height adjustable. I recommend putting one bolt through the top if you're doing this by yourself, that way you don't have to fight it. And then the next thing you wanna do is install the winch and the winch mounting plate already as an assembly. Then take the other bolt you left out, run it through there and install it as one piece. It's a lot easier. Then all you have to do is just tighten that bolt up, pull out the second bolt, slide it in, use the washers and put it all together. Trust me, this will save you some headache. Ask me how I know. Next up, the top of the crane, the hoist, the jib, whatever you want to call it. It's extremely robust, capable of 100 kilograms or 220 pounds of lift. It has these nice rollers as well as pins and stuff to hold everything together. Here is the main lifting strap or mechanism for the basket itself. Now, when you go to feed this through, I fed my synthetic rope through first all the way through, and then I put the pins in the rollers. I won't lie, this first pin was actually relatively easy. Just make sure you pop it through and secure it with the cotter key. I have all my cotter keys on the same side just because I like stuff to look nice and uniform. Of course, this doesn't matter, but it's just one of those little details that somehow irritates me in some setups. 
The front roller is adjustable, and if you're using a B40 or a B150, you'll likely have this in a different position than me. This one was kind of hard. I used the cotter key and just kind of fished it through. If you have small, nimble, dexterous fingers and not sausage fingers like me, it'll be a lot easier to install, but nonetheless, you can do it. It just may take you a few minutes to get it right. The winch cable itself has a little loop on it, and this loop goes through the hole directly in front of the roller. You just kind of want to fish it through there. You can do it again. I may have should have used a tool or something a little smaller to make it easier to do, but it wasn't that bad at all. Unfortunately, I did not film installing the crane, but it's a couple of bolts and it goes together nicely. And here is the winch. Now this thing is just sweet. I do have mine mounted upside down. I do have that cable resting on it. That may not be recommended. I'm just too lazy to take it apart. I don't foresee it being a problem. If it is a problem in the future, I will update the video and I will let you know in a future video. When you go to coil this up the first time, having a little bit of tension on there will make it a lot easier to get coiled and spooled nicely. So there is that foot I mentioned. We'll show that in just a second when I'm back in front of the camera and the proper use. But this is the troll basically without a brewing system on it. It is something sweet. Assure me it's a game changer. It's gonna be a big, big deal in my home brewery and maybe yours too. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump back in front of the camera and walk you through my final thoughts, operation, and a couple other quick little tips before we call it a day. All right, now that you've seen how to build the troll, I also wanna to touch on this foot. Sorry, I don't have any footage of how that works. I have my crane, lift, jib, whatever you wanna call it on the right-hand side. So you wanna make sure the foot is braced here on the corner of this. You can see that way everything kind of stays where it's supposed to be when this guy lifts. When you are lifting with this, you do have to have the front feet locked. So make sure those feet are locked. Also keep in mind, if you have this really, really tall or you have the lifting point in, uh, in the boom itself moved, that will affect the overall lifting capacity. Something like a B80, B40, probably not an issue. A B150 might run into trouble. And as far as other products that this will absolutely work for, you know, do the math yourself. The Brutals docks are a great reference. I'll go ahead and link those just so you can kind of read that. I never read them. I, sometimes I've been known to, to look at pictures. One other thing I want to touch on, Brutals has lowered the price since release. It's currently not slated to come to America, the best of my knowledge. So if you happen to talk to Morbier, let them know that Bradley said like, what the hell? You talk to Vito, talk to Olin, talk to one of these guys and Portly's angry. Anyways, we won't go there. This should definitely come to the US. I think it's worth it. So anyways, the, yeah, it's, it's really, really simple to put together as you saw. So there is one thing that I really, are a few things. It's, it's a few things. Number one, the boom itself, it, 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 when you twist it, it's metal on metal on the bottom. I think uh, I'm definitely gonna put a piece of plastic, something thin under there. I think Brutal should either change that bottom sleeve or just put a little piece of plastic, something simpler, slippery. It will make that action way, way more smoother and a whole lot better. I would also like to see some sort of a clamping system where you could you know, strap some pipes to the back of it or cabling to the back of it. Something modular, just real simple that bolts on that could be sold separately, made out of plastic even, doesn't have to be stainless. And the other one on my wish list, over here on the, on the boom itself, on the, on the jib, on the crane arm, I'd really like to see something that utilizes those extra holes out of plastic that I could use to say hang some stuff on to dry. I could spin it out of the way over my system and hang hoses or something there. That product could also be used to wall mount and you could, if you're not using the troll, you could just hang stuff off the wall and air dry that way. I really wish the boys in Norway would really consider doing that. I think it would be a huge hit and I think it would help the community. The other thing I wanna to touch on is it is not cheap. The setup itself is a thousand euros maybe, a little less than a thousand US dollars, exchange rate for exchange rate, doesn't matter. I will say in my circumstance, I used to have an electric hoist and my old brewery and it worked really well. The problem with those typical cheaper hoists is they're either on or off. There's no kind of potentiometer, so it's on or off, it's kind of clunky. This crank hoist is absolutely fine. I have no urge to put anything electric on it. I'll keep the electric stuff for the bedroom and the brewery, just not my crane. And the last point that I wanna to touch on for value on this guy is that I have actually looked at getting some sort of a jib or a wall mounted crane and the cheapest one I could find itself was $800 plus shipping. So if you think about what is on display here, what they're offering, what's been engineered, this is one hell of a value. 
All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone is having a great day. I'll see you real, real soon. Remember, home brewing is good. Take care now. I had a lot of quesadilla for dinner. It was good, but it's the troll. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's the troll. It's, it's nothing like it. it. It's new on the market. Nothing is like this.